Hi all, welcome to the Jenkins Governance uh, Board Meeting. Today is December 16th. Uh, we have uh, several contributors on the call. Um, and the today's agenda is to go through the recent news, uh, process the trademark usage request from Wirsch to Schlapp, um, discuss New Year blog post, um, um, take a look at the roadmap, and uh, Alisa added a topic for Jenkins the electronic uh, uh, book, which we need to publish. Are there any other topics we would like to discuss? Um, is is the New Year blog post also covering the concept of the CDF um, newsletter? Is that the same the same topic, Oleg, or is that what does that need to be? Not exactly. Topic? Not exactly. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we can discuss it separately. But the yeah, CDF newsletter is basically a summary of. Uh, key events in the project uh, we need to send to them. And the New Year blog post is what we use to publish every year. And I believe that we should publish it uh, this year as well. Okay, so let's uh, Oleg, from... just a quick yeah. question. So that blog, is that the same thing as the um, kind of like a, a year recap? Yes. Ah, gotcha. Uh, yeah, so... Mark is not able to join uh, today. So, yeah, um, I'll uh, just uh, discuss it on a high level then. Okay, recent news. So, yeah, last uh, uh, week uh, was relatively silent. Two weeks ago, we had a major discussion about the uh, outages, about uh, uh, new releases, uh, Jenkins uh, 3 proposal, and other things. So if you're interested to see news, uh, please refer to the uh, previous meeting. Um, are there any, any, any new events we would like to share today? I guess not. And yeah, none for me. Yeah, so maybe uh, yeah, on a small note, uh, we have started a call for um, um, Google Summer of Code uh, project ideas and mentors. Uh, so it's um, in the developer mailing list. There will be also a blog post from uh, Kara published today. So if you are interested uh, to participate in Google Summer of Code, to have a student working on a project of your interest uh, this summer, uh, it's a good time to think about uh, project ideas and maybe submit one so that we can uh, start accumulating the project list for the application uh, we will submit in mid-February. There is still plenty of time, but uh, there are students um, exploring the project uh, and uh, if we have ideas earlier, it also means that uh, we have uh, better chances of uh, attracting students uh, for um, uh, rediscovery during the Christmas break. Okay. And yeah, I don't think that we have anything new to share. So, Let's go forward uh, with the agenda. So trademark usage request, um, yeah, there was a long discussion in the mailing list. Uh, so the context is that uh, on October 14th, uh, we adopted a new policy, which is saying that we want to follow Linux Foundation trademark usage guidelines as a default. Um, though at that point uh, we made an additional disclaimer that uh, uh, if uh, in exceptional cases, uh, uh, mostly in the case where there is a precedent of similar name being approved, we uh, may accept an alternate pattern. Uh, but uh, we set a clear expectation that uh, um, the uh, trademarks uh, would be uh, that um, our recommendation is uh, to follow Linux Foundation trademark guidelines. So here we have got a request from Virtus Lab. They uh, launched a new product um, and uh, they would like to use uh, Virtus Lab uh, Jenkins Operator service. So the problem with that uh, trademark is that uh, yeah, it's compliant with uh, our previous policy, uh, well, uh, which we were using a couple of years ago. 
and before we actually started adopting uh, the Linux Foundation one. And um, if you take uh, the decision we had in October 14th, then you no, know, it's not compliant because uh, there are another, uh, other patterns uh, recommended by the Linux Foundation trademark guidelines. And there was a proposal for virtual lab operator service for Jenkins. Uh, we discussed that, uh, but uh, yet uh, the requester uh, decided to proceed uh, with the original name, uh, this one. So we started uh, facilitating feedback in the mailing list. Uh, here, what uh, the rules we have. I personally cast it zero because, um, yeah, although I do not feel strongly, uh, I do not see a particular reason uh, why it would be an exception. In this case, we adopted uh, the policy and we should rather start following that. Same feedback from Gavin. We have uh, plus one from Mark. Um, and uh, we have uh, minus one from Daniel uh, based on uh, the process uh, discussion. So right now we have net zero in the mailing list and, and uh, yep, we didn't get feedback uh, from all board members yet. So um, uh, from those who are on the call, uh, Alice and uh, Uli haven't voted yet. And uh, uh, it would be nice to get your feedback. I think uh, for me, if we are, if we want to adhere to the Linux Foundation guidelines, and let's, we need to start somewhere. So, um, so let's start with this one. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I'm for sticking with the Linux Foundation guidelines. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's uh, minus one. And. Yeah, well, taking the conversation, uh, I'm also leaning towards uh, reducing my vote because, yeah, Daniel is absolutely right. If we adopted the policy, mm -hmm. we should rather go for that. Yeah. So I'm not saying there shouldn't be any exceptions, but um, I think exceptions make sense when the result would be weirdly inconsistent. So, for example, a sibling product to a previously approved trademark usage mm -hmm. um, has a reasonable case for an exception. This one is just something completely new, which is why I don't really think it's a good idea to just um, go ahead with allowing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, uh, this is not the same discussion as in the beginning of the meeting, or, or um, because I came a little bit too late. So, mm, same discussion. Uh, same discussion. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So, it's fine. Yeah, okay. yeah. I, I think if we now have adopted the new you know, naming convention, we should stick to it. That makes sense. So, minus one from me as well. Okay. Oh, sorry. Almost. Yeah, sorry if I confused you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I still feel that we don't have a quorum. Uh, I suggest that uh, we wait for feedback from Marky um, and then close it in the mailing list. But, uh, yeah. I think that uh, we either bite the bullet with the policy and uh, it feels like it's time to do that. Uh, quick question, Oleg, did you yeah. mean to put a zero for Gavin or is he on the wrong oh, line? Uh, yeah, zero, zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Are you fine with this vote, or does anyone want to reconsider, adjust? Looks good to me. Okay. So, um, I think, uh, yeah, waiting uh, a bit in the mailing list, and then yeah, just uh, following the discussion. We definitely don't have a strong consensus uh, 
to approve that. So, mm, should we move on? I think that uh, I'll take action item uh, to communicate it to back uh, because, yeah, it was uh, rather me who probably overemphasize it, um, uh, possibility for exceptions. Uh, so yeah, I will take a action item here to communicate. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so for the new year blog post, um, and, uh, so um, mm, um, we need uh, to post one. Um, Last year we posted it uh, after the new year. It was something like January seventh. This one, yeah, January seventh. And uh, this blog post basically summarized uh, key highlights. Uh, it uh, included project updates. Uh, basically, once we had uh, from the um, Lisbon uh, Contributor Summit. And after that, uh, there were some stats uh, we collected from uh, different sources. So this is what we've got. Um, and uh, maybe it's a format we should follow uh, this year. Um, um, when we had a discussion uh, two weeks ago, Mark here wanted to take uh, the lead on this effort and coordinate uh, the blog post. Um, we wanted to have a sync up this week so that we would start uh, drafting that. Uh, but yeah, um, Marky might uh, not be available for a while, so um, I think we need to regroup. And if, um, yeah, so next week, uh, latest, uh, somebody of us will submit a draft so that we can uh, create a, a new blog post together. Um, does it make sense to everyone, or should we speed up that? It makes sense to me. And to me. I think that's reasonable, though, like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah, and on separate notes, we have this. Just to confirm, what's the intended uh, publication date? Uh, we don't have uh, a strict date for publishing. Uh, obviously, it's better to do it um, around uh, the Christmas uh, New Year period. Um, but yeah, if it uh, arrives slightly late, it's also fine. So historically, it was rather beginning of January. Right, okay. Um, seems like I, I was just wondering whether we're targeting January 1st or what the intended date is. Sure. But uh, to clarify, late next week or mid next week is the intended publication date. That we're aiming for, is that correct? Optimistic one, uh, yes. Uh, but yeah. So it really depends uh, on contributions. And maybe it's a signal that we actually should start it even earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Same for the CDF newsletter. So deadline for projects is January 12th. Uh, but it's uh, again a summary of key events, and we have some. So I think that it should be just another document we create and collaboratively update. So I do not. I, yeah, I will also create one. Um, again, uh, 
just uh, I will coordinate with Mark uh, what is his availability. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, both documents I think should just go to the developer mailing list so that everybody can contribute the uh, patch and uh, uh, we just review them and uh, send off an advocacy and outreach seek uh, or some way before posting. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, do we want to do a roadmap review? I believe, so last time we did it, uh, it was um, in uh, November, since that I'm not sure we had uh, any major changes. Um, so there were some items uh, here and there, which we need to drag. So, uh, you know, we have confirmation that Jinx templating engine is now under development. Um, we have a pretty big gap in tools and service integrations because even if there are plugins uh, happening here and there, uh, contributors do not put uh, them on the roadmap. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is something we probably need to figure out how we do because there are services appearing, um, but we need to improve contributor outreach because otherwise uh, we will always have a kind of gap there with uh, GSOC project ideas on the right. Mm. So, Oleg, can you share some examples of tool and service integrations that are in progress but aren't on the on the roadmap currently? So we can just uh, take a look at hosting requests. So there are new plugins ah. being hosted, and uh, yeah, half of these plugins are integrations with different tools. Got it. Okay. So thanks. It's a question: which of these uh, plugin integrations? Uh, uh, important enough uh, and uh, address a significant um, uh, subset of users to be posted on the roadmap. Um, but yeah, I think that uh, we need uh, to at least highlight some of these activities. Now, would we had discussed in Google Summer of Code office hours this morning a Git plugin or a credentials binding? topic is that under tool and service integrations as a gsoc project or would that be somewhere else it would be a tool and services uh, okay section that's for sure so regarding um, uh, so roadmap still uh, highlights uh, key initiatives uh, with a major impact so what we will need to do is once uh, there is a clear scope for this project uh, we decide whether it should be highlighted because yeah this year gsoc projects will be smaller Last year, we added uh, many of them on the roadmap. I'm not sure about this year. So I think we just need uh, to discuss it on a case by case basis. But the uh, Git plugin is definitely important for pretty much every Jenkins user. Uh, so it's uh, rather a question of uh, what uh, we put there. Great, thank you. Thanks for the clarity. Yeah. So user experience, uh, plugin management, UI, UX, revamp, um, yeah, it's in preview. There are still uh, changes flowing in, but I would say that plugin management uh, completely changed uh, thanks to Daniel, thanks to team, and to many other contributors. So I'm not sure whether we plan uh, any more major changes there. Mm -hmm. I don't. I think the. Mm -hmm. It's only really major because it's a collection of many individually minor changes. So, mm -hmm. and, and yet, and yet, for me, the delight of dramatically faster, more attractive user interface, more intuitive search. Yeah, I, I agree with Daniel that they may have been individual contributions, but I think mm -hmm. they, it's much much better than it was before. That's been a significant improvement over the last year in the plugin management. Yeah, I totally support that. And uh, yeah, I think that uh, we should um, keep it uh, in preview and maybe move it to complete it with the next LTS cycle. Um, but yeah, it's a uh, subject uh, for your UX seek discussion. Next item, we have configuration UI table studies. So this one is definitely in preview. This one definitely needs more contributors. And if you are looking for, uh, for an area uh, where you uh, to contribute to Jenkins, uh, this is something to consider. Uh, and 
uh, yeah, you can see that uh, we implemented this uh, change more than one month ago. There is still uh, many incompatible plugins which we need uh, to address. And uh, the clock is ticking because uh, the next LCS cutoff is um, in uh, a bit more than one uh, month. So by this time, we will definitely need uh, to take a look at this dashboard and decide what we do. Either try to de deliver all these fixes um, or um, find alternate solution. So for me, it's rather push forward and uh, try to get it done. But yeah, still it requires significant uh, time because yeah, most likely this list is not even a final list. Most likely there are other plugins we still do not know about. So definitely something to consider and maybe we'll still need to come up with a, uh, whatever compatibility layer in JavaScript though. No. I'm not exactly sure whether we can implement that taking previous discussions. Okay. So modernized mirror infrastructure, I believe it's done uh, or not. I, I think it is done. Daniel, any, any insights you have on things? Oleg, I bet if you click that, you'll see, if you click the link there, you'll see it will open for us. And I think most of the tasks, yeah, Mm -hmm. I th I think it, and we're now working again on Azure file storage. So so we're back running the way we were before the outage. So mm -hmm. I th I think that one is justifiably done. Okay, then yeah, probably we should uh, close it. Move to company. Yeah, let and, and is it okay if I submit that pull request? You yeah, don't that's object perfectly to, fine. Great. Okay, mm -hmm. let me make myself a note. Okay, then. Items in progress, mm, UI, UX look and feel updates. We still have some stories flowing in. Uh, definitely the scope defined by UX hasn't been fully delivered yet. So we should keep it uh, as is. Plugin documentation migration. We still have a lot of plugins to migrate. Um, well, uh, last time I checked, uh, we had around uh, 600 plugins. It's, uh, yeah, it's a big number, but uh, we still have a lot which haven't been submitted or which haven't been released. Mm -hmm. Yes, and we did actually on that topic, we did have a conversation raised in the Jenkins Infra meeting from Olivier Vernin asking what our plan is for Jenkins Wiki. And so we've started a plan there in first draft mm -hmm talking about where we go with the Jenkins Wiki. It's going to stay read-only and eventually we need to probably decommission it. Yeah. Eventually we definitely need to do that. Uh, let's see what would be the implementation, but now, yeah, there is still a huge gap to, I feel. Right. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, maybe we could just archive these pages uh, and so be it. We don't really need a uh, confluence to display them. So let's see. Mm. Okay. Then uh, documentation migration to Jenkins IO is still in progress. A lot of uh, things happened, but uh, yeah, there is a lot of documentation. Same for terminology. Mm. Pull requests uh, get uh, merged, but everything is in progress. So these columns remain the same. Um, management administration. Do we want uh, to go through the entire list today or do we want uh, to stop at particular areas so that we cover other topics? Nico? Oh, Mark, you're muted. Package and, packaging and platform support is one that I would like to be sure we touch on. Okay. Uh, okay. Other areas are less of, less of concern for me and Jenkins on cloud maybe is one that you want to touch on. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so I think that uh, the MOL is um, in the right state. 
they so are managed okay. permissions preview remoting preview uh, plugin compatibility is still a work in progress though i would say that uh, the vast majority of plugins are compatible so probably we could close it as an initiative uh, there will be still long tail but whatever um, uh, Windows services and script security basically they're in the same state. There are pull requests suggested, but they haven't been fully integrated. Um, for cloud platforms, uh, Jenkins Fall Runner and the development, uh, there are changes here and there, not ready for 1.0. I don't expect it to be ready for 1.0 anytime soon. So just uh, there is still uh, things here and there to be completed. External fingerprint storage, uh, it's in preview, it works, uh, there are adopters, so we rather need to move it completed, but uh, firstly we need to move APIs for GA. But I think that uh, the story is solid enough to call it closed. Uh, Tekton pipelines will step uh, under development, uh, there are some changes uh, going there, there is a new roadmap, but uh, it's in alpha, so uh, the state is correct. Uh, pluggable build log storage for Jenkins pipeline, basically the same. Uh, so it's uh, in preview, everyone uh, can evaluate that. At the same time, it's fully operational. So if you want to, you can uh, use it. Uh, there is Fluentd plugin and a uh, few other implementation attempts. Pluggable unit test uh, result storage. Uh, again, it was shipped in the JUnit plugin uh, with PostgreSQL implementation by team. Uh, so we need team to comment whether it's ready for GE or not, but yeah, the implementation is definitely ready for preview. The command Jenkins on Kubernetes, I think we should move it to done once uh, the last pull request uh, is implemented. There is still a lot to do, but... Um, but that project, ready. that project as a project has concluded, Zenob is actually continuing to write and we have mm -hmm. office hours tomorrow with her. Okay. That's good. Mm -hmm. And yeah, basically no other changes on this list. So packaging and platform, I suggest that we close here and uh, finish other topics after that. So uh, Mark, uh, would you like to summarize? Yeah, so for me there, the summary is that mm -hmm. I need to be sure that I get updates made there and we've got significant work going on in the Docker image generation trying to get towards these multi-plat, multi-arch images like S390X, PowerPC, ARM64, and, mm -hmm. and the pull requests are in progress. We'll continue making progress on them. I also owe the organization a JEP proposing a Docker mm -hmm. image deprecation policy or a Docker image maintenance policy. And mm -hmm. that I hope within the next, well, before the start of the new year. Uh, there is consensus, so JEP is, well, it would be nice to have one. Yeah, the, the mm -hmm. platform SIG wants the JEP very much because we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're behaving oddly right now. And that's, that's the benefit of a JEP is it'll get us more consistent mm -hmm. document to refer to for our behavior. What do we do? How do we choose mm -hmm. things? Okay. So any other updates on platforms? None from me. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, mm. I think uh, yeah, uh, this is a good uh, summary for now. Uh, we can discuss governance, uh, but for governance topics, it's definitely, it definitely makes sense to have uh, more governance uh, uh, board members, and we need to plan uh, our activity for the next year. So. My, I think that in January, when all the holidays are over, we will uh, keep a discussion with uh, Uli, Marky, and uh, Gavin, and uh, uh, Kiki, Tyler, and all other contributors who are willing to participate in the governance area so that we could um, 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 uh, prepare the roadmap for the next year. Because currently, yeah, we completed all major items to be planned for the year. Um, yeah, there are some items like funding, which still needs to be addressed, but ultimately we need uh, more content there. And it's a good time to think about that. Mm -hmm. Like, can I also add, um, mm -hmm. so when we uh, were in 
past in-person um, Jenkins user conferences and or mm -hmm. DevOps world, we had a lot of people who come to the booth and say, you know, wants to know what's the latest and greatest um, in Jenkins. And then um, for this year, DevOps world, the virtual event, we also had, well, one of the top um, presentation or session was about people wanting to know what is the latest and greatest in Jenkins. And I think that was your session and, um, and um, um, oh my gosh, Hartley. Oh, I'm, so, I'm, I'm Yeah, so that was a presentation uh, by Jeremy about UI UX. Jeremy. There was yeah. a presentation by Mark about documentation. And there was a, a top level overview by me. Uh, yeah, but, I think yeah. it was yours that was at a very, um, that was very, uh, that had a lot of views on it. So I'm wondering, would it be worthwhile for, uh, for the project to maybe do a monthly, bi-monthly or quarterly update of you know, the stuff that's going on um, of the roadmap and so that people can see what's the latest and greatest or what's going on with the project. And maybe you know, that's an opportunity for us to um, ask for contributors as well. I know we're always asking for contributors, but, yeah. but that's just a suggestion. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Bye, Daniel. Um, yeah, I think it would be nice. So it basically boils down to the bandwidth to prepare that. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, if we can uh, do that, let's do that. Because all this uh, materials help. We submit a monthly update to Continuous Delivery Foundation. Mm -hmm. So maybe we could uh, have a collaborative version uh, every few months on the Jenkins IO website. Yeah, yeah, and, then with, I, I, and um, CDF can also help us with you know the um, the webinar, mm -hmm. podcast, what whatever we want to do. Yeah, right. So let's keep talking about that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, let's try to find some time. Okay, I can help drive that. Cool. Okay, right. so the last topic in the agenda is uh, for Jenkins uh, ebook uh, approval for to proceed uh, as governance board members as signers of the ebook later, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. a little bit of the background is we took about six um, mm -hmm. uh, Jenkins is the way case studies um, where we do have uh, approval to use their logo. Mm -hmm. uh, so we we, we, we shorten it very short and sweet into six very brief stories with you know, solutions, challenges, and um, you know, what was the outcome. Um, so my ask, so at the beginning of this document, uh, can you click on the attachment? Uh, yeah. yeah. So at the beginning of the document, um, there's a letter that it's kind of like a welcome letter. And um, I was asking whether we could use the governance um, members as the signer of this letter underneath where it says the Jenkins project, right? Um, but Oleg, I think your suggestion is great as well. I'm totally okay with, I, I actually um, think, I'm okay with putting my name on it as events officer for 2020 and the, um, and the outreach SIG. So, um, yeah, whatever I that, could... sorry, yeah, whatever this team uh, um, approved for me to do, I'm I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. yeah, personally, I would uh, prefer to give credit to you because uh, it's all thanks to you and to sponsors uh, that we've got Jenkins's the way program that we have we've got so much content and that we've got uh, uh, so much user feedback. Uh, yeah, I would be happy to sign uh, that, but uh, yeah, my contributions, they're pretty much zero. And, well, uh, yeah. well, for me, it's, I'm happy doing it. I, I, mm -hmm. I don't need the credit, to be honest, just, just glad to be able to help out and, oh, you know, contribute. You, you totally deserve this credit. And mm. I think that it would be the best outcome. 
I, for, for me, I think it, it has heavier weight. It has more weight if it's, it's by the governance board. But I'm totally fine what we decide here. Mm -hmm. So other opinions? I like the idea to have Alyssa's name there. <laughs> I think it's really a good idea because you made the work and now you're the responsible person who's yeah, not responsible, but everybody sees that you've done a lot of things and it's really good to see you there, I think. All right. Noted. Yeah. Thank you. Mark? Plus one to Alyssa's name. I hadn't hadn't considered that. I think that's great. I all in favor of that. And for all the reasons you mentioned, all like very good. Yeah. So my all suggestion right. is uh, to just proceed with that then. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I'll proceed with that. Thank you. Thanks to you. And do we have any other topics? Uh, if not, uh, let's uh, stay for a second uh, after the recording. Um, and yeah, thanks to everyone uh, who is watching. And uh, yeah, see you in the new year. Speaking of that, do we do a meeting on 30th? Mm. I'd prefer not, personally. <laughs> I would like to be out, of, out on the 30th. Plus one. <laughs> no meeting. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, it's easy to find consensus on this topic, right? <laughs> and, okay. and I think that's a topic where you don't even, we have quorum by definition at those present in the meeting. Right. Yeah, right. So it might make sense uh, to have um, maybe out of order meeting uh, one week later. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, discuss it when we get there. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's that's not an unreasonable idea. We did something like that with a doc sig where we we skipped one meeting, shifted the next a little later. So instead mm -hmm. of doing December 30th, do it exactly one week later and then be back on track a follow mm -hmm. the following week, right? That sounds fine to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So thanks everyone. I mean, I'll stop the recording and uh, yeah, let's uh, debrief quickly. Bye.